And now let's hear what Les has to say about tendencies and compulsions. Our last session brings to mind a word called liberation, with a capital L. Liberation being another substitute for the word happiness with a capital H. And because of what happened, it allowed certain things to come out that were good. Liberation is happy. Liberation is freedom, which is freedom of choice on anything and everything. Freedom to do or freedom not to do anything you choose. When the group first started, you didn't have this freedom in the group. This is the only thing that I remarked about in the beginning because it was a hindrance in what we were trying to accomplish here. Now, anything I give, I give freely, and that means on both sides. I give it from my heart. At the same time, you don't have to accept it. If you accept it, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. We never try to force anything, and anything done by force is wrong. Never accept anything because I say so. This is just the opposite of freedom. If you accept it because I say so, you're accepting hearsay. If you accept it for checking, that's good. Check everything I say. Check it out. Not until you see it should you accept it. Freedom is choice to do or not to do on anything you want. And that is to accept or not to accept what I'm saying. And you should never accept it until you see it yourself. Before we can see the absolute reality, the changeless reality, we have to see the reality in the world. Why? Why do we have to see something we have to dump? Because when we don't see the reality in the world, it's because of aversions to the world. Attachments and aversions blind us to what's out there. That's why everyone looks at something and sees something different. If we all had no attachments and no aversions, whatever we would see, we would see alike. Every attachment, every aversion blinds us a bit. So to get to the reality with a capital R, we have to see what's in the world first. We have to see it just the way it is. When there's an accident, it happened only one way, even though six people saw it happen maybe six different ways. We should be able to see the accident just the way it happened. Then we see the reality in the world. After that, we let go of the reality of the world by seeing the real reality, the world becomes a dream. You see the accident just as it was. Just the way it happened. You're aware that people see accidents very differently, right? They can't all be right. But yet there was one way in which that accident happened. But it is very good to see what's going on in front of your eyes exactly the way it's going on. When you talk to groups, sometimes you'll make a statement. Minutes after, someone says, well, he said just the opposite of what you said. <clears throat> the reason why that happens is that person has preconceived ideas. The concepts are all set. And they only hear what they want to hear. They hear just the opposite of the way you're saying it. 
Well, that's a block on the road to freedom. We should have no fixed concepts except one, that we want the absolute truth. Outside of that, we should have no fixed concepts. It's very good therapy. It is excellent practice to try to help others. Someday everyone does that. You live not for your little self, but for your big self out there. You identify with all people, and your life becomes one of giving to others, wanting others to be what they are, infinite beings, infinitely happy. Now, you couldn't feel angry, but you could act angry. Sometimes it's necessary, in order to communicate with angry people, to be a bit angrier than they are. This won't involve you now, but <laughs> sometimes I do that. There, if someone is very angry about something and uh, I want to communicate with them, I have to get a bit angrier than they are, and then they hear me. Otherwise, they don't hear a thing I'm saying. This is obvious in everyday life, and someone's angry and you're composed and calm, you'll talk, they don't hear a thing you're saying. Get into the mood that they're in and they'll hear you. That's just an act when you're angry. It's not, you don't really feel it, you're acting it. So it's your attitude that you maintain this high love, it's the ego expressing. When you feel this pure love, it's the God you expressing. So when you have any emotion, you're covering up the God you. Uh, I think it was in the Verities I took off on what emotion is, like it's never been took off on before, that there is no emotion, but the feeling of lack of love, that's all it is. But the more we feel, the lack, it's a feeling of lack of love and wanting to reestablish the feeling of love. And to the degree that we feel that lack of love, we call it fear, hate, envy, jealousy, it's different degrees of the feeling of lack of love and the wanting to reestablish it that we call emotion. Love itself is not an emotion. It's a very, it's, a, it's the quietest of all things. I went that tortuous road of psychology way back in the days of Watson's behaviorism. Don't say yes to that. Oh, that was back in the early 30s that was popular. And I stayed with psychology right through the years. Ended up with Freud, very in intense with Freud. I studied everything that he wrote that was translated into English. I really studied. And the whole thing behind Freud is uh, purging yourself of the inhibitions and the compulsions. He calls the catharsis, cathexis. The psychoanalyst tries to get you back to the times you set in these compulsions and inhibitions have you relive it and free yourself of it? And I discovered what uh, the Freudian way took a year to do. And I discovered 
by metaphysics, there was so much of this inhibition and compulsion, not only from this lifetime, but from many, many lifetimes before, that it, it was a forever process. That rather than that, when we get to see who we are, we just dump this ego with all its inhibitions and compulsions in one lump sum. We let go of the whole thing. And that it, it's really the only way because while you're trying to get rid of these compulsions and inhibitions, you're acknowledging the ego and you're validating it and you're sort of bogging yourself down because of that. So the fastest and really only way is to recognize who you are. And when you do, that scorches the ego. You scorch it enough to burn it to pieces. Then it's finished. A uh, realized being sometimes will, when he's in a body, <coughs> will walk around in a sick body as a constant reminder that he is not the body. You now the sick body doesn't perturb him one bit. He'll be just as cheerful and loving as when his body is perfect. But this is nothing to worry about now. First, learn how to perfect the body. The reason why I mention it is because occasionally you'll meet a master who walk, walk, walks around with a defective body. I thought it'd be good to know why. Now, everything in the world is mental. Whatever you think is, you're always right because you think so. <coughs> if you think a draft gives you a cold, you're right, it does, because you think so. If you think walking into a house where there's a virus, that you'll get it, you're right, because you think so. If you walk into a house where there's a virus, and you think you won't get it, you're right, you won't. It's the thinking that determines. We all love to the degree that we are realized. But we try to increase it more and more to become realized. We can always lift it just a bit. Keep moving up in some days. You see, love is something that cannot be applied to one person, one thing, one plant, one animal. But actually, love is a general thing. If it's for one person and not for the other, the reason why we love that one person is because we think we need that one person that that one person has something we want. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. <clears throat> Love will create universes. The greater the understanding, the greater the love we have. Love and understanding are the same thing. You understand one, you love that one. If you love that one, you understand that one. The greatest thing you can do is just be. And now we just heard from Lester. And so I'm going to show you.